Hello. In this video, we're going to study the amplitude response of a Butterworth filter uh, with the objective of being able to relate the circuit performance, uh, which is typically translated into the specs of our circuit, uh, to the order of the filter or filter complexity, which is typically represented with the letter N. Uh, and it represents the number of poles of the circuit. It also represents the number of reactive elements in the circuit. Uh, so before we do that, I'm going to write down the unity gain Butterworth filter equations. Uh, if you recall, when we are going to design Butterworth filters, we're going to use the same approach uh, that we have talked about, where we start with a normalized circuit, gain of one, cutoff frequency of one, and then we apply uh, scaling in order to come up with the right values for our components in order to meet a certain cutoff frequency, gain spec, etc. Uh, so the, the unit gain Butterworth filter equations, I'm going to write first the one for the low-pass filter and then one for the high-pass filter. For the uh, low-pass filter, essentially I'm going to refer to it as uh, HLP for transfer function of the low-pass filter. It's going to be a function of frequency. In, V, out. And it can be written as... Uh, 1 divided by 1 plus j f over fc to the power of 2 times, to the power of n, excuse me. Now when I take the magnitude of that, the magnitude of h, lp, as a function of frequency, that is now... 1 divided by the square root of the real part the square, in this case the real part is 1, so 1, uh, plus, and the imaginary part the squared, so f divided by fc to the power of n, and that to the power of 2, and by the rules of um, exponentials we will have that that is equal to f over fc times, or to the power of 2 times n. If I wanted to calculate the value of that magnitude response in dBs, HLP of f in dBs, uh, it will basically be equal to um, 20 times the log base 10 of that magnitude response. Uh, because of the properties of logarithms, we can calculate it as 20 times the log base 10 of the numerator, uh, which is 1, so that's going to give me a value of 0, minus 20 times the log base 10 of the denominator. And uh, since the square root can be uh, interpreted as uh, as raising the function inside the square root to the power of 1 half, and by the pro properties of logarithms, when we have um, the log, log base 10 of uh, something to the power of 1 half, we can basically make that equal to one half times the log base 10 of whatever is inside the square root. So this is going to be so zero for the numerator and then minus 20 times one half. So that means 10 times the log base 10 of uh, basically what's inside the square root. One plus f over fc to the power of 2n. So this is the magnitude of the transfer function for the Butterworth low-pass filter. And uh, n is again the order of the filter, so for a filter of order 1, n will be equal to 1, and we will just have the standard uh, equation for the first order low-pass filter, n equals 2 uh, will be an order 2 filter, order 3 will be n equals 3, etc. Now we often, before we start designing something, we want to know, in order to meet a certain uh, set of specifications, what is the minimum order filter that I can use? Um, and so in order to do that, we're going to try to graphically illustrate how the order relates to the performance. So let's imagine this is my uh, body plot of the magnitude versus frequency. So this is going to be my HLP of f in dBs. 
with the top line being the one of zero dBs. And then I can go uh, minus 20 dBs, minus 40 dBs, minus 60 dBs, minus 80 dBs, minus 100 dBs, etc. And this obviously corresponds to, I mean, minus 20 dBs in linear scale will be uh, a division by a factor of 10, minus 40, 1 over 100, minus 60 is an attenuation factor of 1,000, minus 80 is 1 over 10,000, minus 100 is 1 over 100,000. And now let's mark some frequencies here. Let's say a frequency of 1 hertz, 10 hertz, and this is frequency in hertz, 100 hertz, 1000 hertz, 10 to the 4, etc. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a grid so that it is easier for me to draw. The different lines and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be drawing the magnitude response of a Butterworth filter for different values of n for different uh, filter order Right, so for um, n equals 1, first notice if I'm talking about a, a normalized circuit, my cutoff frequency is going to be equal to, um, to 1. And so uh, I will have my at a value of, of 1. Actually, to make it really normalized, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot f divided by fc so that way so that way when um, f is equal to fc then that ratio is equal to 1 and so therefore 1 is the cutoff frequency and then notice that for a uh, an order 1 uh, filter what I will have is that uh, this will go decreasing at the rate of 20 dBs per decade. And so in one decade, I will go down by 20 dBs. Another decade, I will go down by another 20. Another decade, by another 20, and so forth. So this will be the line for my order one. And that's just because um, this will be equal to minus 10 times the uh, log base 10 of 1 plus f over fc um, and so for a frequency of 10 let's imagine uh, 10 times fc this will be 1 plus 10 10 to the power of 2 so minus 10 times the log base 10 of 10 to the power of 2 will be minus 10 times uh, times the log base 10 of 10 to the power of 2 will essentially be 2 so basically minus 20 dBs and so forth if I were going with an order 2 and I perform the calculations, what I will end up with is uh, something that also has a corner frequency at f sub c. And so it starts going down when f over f sub c is equal to 1. Uh, but if you perform the calculations, you will see it starts going down at the rate of 40 dBs per decade. So in one decade, it goes down by 40 dBs. In another decade, it goes down by another 40 dBs. And so that will be my n equals 2. Something like that. It should be a straight line, though it doesn't look like one. I'm going to give it another shot. Somewhat better. Uh, as you can imagine, for n equals 3, 
I'm going to have the magnitude of that uh, the magnitude response is going to start going down. It's going to go 60 dB in one decade, etc. That's n equals 3. And so you can see that as the uh, order of the filter increases, my, uh, my uh, steepness of my curve becomes higher and higher. So my curve basically becomes more and more steep, which means I have uh, something that is closer and closer to the perfect filter. Now, typically in my specification, I will be given um, a minimum stop band attenuation. And based on that minimum stop band attenuation, I am going to calculate what's the minimum uh, filter order for me to meet that specification. Before we do an example of that, I did want to, just for completion, go ahead and write down the equations for the high pass filter for the battery worth. And so if instead of a low pass, I have my HHP, if you will, it's a function of F. This is my V in, this is my V out. My HHP as a function of frequency is now 1 over 1 plus uh, J, and just the opposite, FC divided by F to the power of N. So you can see it's exactly the same as the low pass, except the locations of F and FC are transposed. If I wanted to calculate my magnitude response, just as I did for my low pass filter, it would be something similar, 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus, and again, just the locations of FC and F are transposed with respect to the previous case, to the power of 2n, and if I wanted to calculate it, HHP, of f in dBs is going to be equal to uh, negative 10 times the log base 10 of 1 plus fc divided by f to the power of 2n. So essentially the same as the low pass except uh, instead of using the ratio f over fc we are now using the ratio fc divided by f.